Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Here we have a blog post we want to share with you. And, of course, we review the latest in social media and technology. Be sure to check in multiple times a day as we upload video. Um, this is going to be a phone versus comparison. We've been doing number one, especially uh, with the iPhone 5 release. And, of course, uh, all the different phone companies send us these phones, and we give them the reviews so that you, the listener reader, can take and decide which phones might work best for you. Um, so we're doing a comparison today. This is going to be between Verizon's uh, HTC Droid Incredible 4G LTE and between the uh, Virgin Mobile HTC Evo V 4G. This is the Evo V 4G. Now it says Sprint on the device, but this is was sent to us from the PR company. It uh, Sprint owns Virgin Mobile, and uh, the Virgin Mobile networks run on Sprint. So. Uh, there you have the reason for the Sprint uh, logo on it. You can find the uh, phones for Verizon at verizonwireless.com. That's verizonwireless.com. Be sure to check them all out. And then you can also go to virginmobileusa.com. That's virginmobileusa.com. Tell them Chris Voss sent you. And let's take a look and compare these two phones. Now, I've played with most of these, uh, these phones for about a month now. I really enjoy both of them. They both have features that uh, make them powerhouses in and of their own. Um, the Verizon phone is a rocking phone when it comes to memory and speed. The Sprint phone for the HTC has a really cool 3D camera that's really nice, and it's got a good phone uh, basis hardware in it of and of itself. We'll let you just be the judge of that. So let's take a look at the HTC Droid Incredible 4G LTE. Its size is 4.82 in height, 2.4 in width, and 0.46 in thickness. Weight 4.66 ounces in uh, how much it weighs. You're looking at an SLCD capacitive touchscreen with 60 million colors, 540 by 960 pixels, a 4 inch screen with 275 ppi pixel dis density. Has a HTC Sense UI 4.0 on it and comes with the Android 4.0. Oh, system uh, for the OS. Now, I believe this one version we have here is upgraded to 4.03. We'll verify that here in a second. Um, it has a upgradable memory slot of a micro SD up to 32 gigabytes, uh, 8 gigabytes of storage, 1 gigabytes of RAM. And inside of that, also at the back, is an 8 megapixel uh, camera and a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera at 720p. The back facing camera will do video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it comes with a Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon dual core 1.2 gigahertz chip. And uh, it's a handy, fast little baby, especially with the memory that's built into it. Standard battery, 1700 milliamps uh, battery. Now let's take a look at the uh, Evo V 4G so that we can uh, see what the uh, specs are on it and see if we can't get that data here for you. Um, it's a great little phone and one of the differences here, like I say, it has a 3D camera on it. Okay, so with the Evo V 4G, you're looking at it's 4.96 in height, 2.56 width, 0.47 in thickness, has a 6 ounce weight to it. Uh, you're looking at a 1730 milliamp battery. Uh, the display is an LCD color TFT TFD resolution of 540 by 960 pixels at a 4.3 inch screen. It runs on Android. 4.0, and I believe we've upgraded this a uh, bit to 4.03. We'll double check here in a second. Processor is 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon dual core. Memory is 4 gigabytes of internal storage plus 8 gigabyte card included, which is an upgradable uh, micro SD card that you can put into the device. You can upgrade this device to, I believe it's 32 uh, gigabytes that you can take and put in. Yes, that is correct. Now, the back camera is a resolution 5 megapixel camera. The front facing camera is um, 1.3 megapixel. Uh, it has resolution uh, of 720 HD for uh, both 2D and 3D. We'll show you that here in a second. It's got a really cool thing. So, now there is Beats Audio, which is on the HTC Droid. Let's see if we have that on the HTC here. It looks like we do not on this particular model of the HTC Evo V 4G. So let's take a look at both devices and we'll get into them some more as to how they work and what they do. Now let's check the model software that we have on both these so you can see what we're playing with here. 
Uh, like I say, I play with both devices and had a lot of fun with both of them, and they're great. Um, so whichever device you think you want to take and have or choose, I would highly recommend it because I like both phones. You can see here we have Android 4.03 version. These have been upgraded to on both phones. So uh, there you are. We have the HTC Sense 4.0 version on here on the left on the Verizon Droid. We have HTC Sense version 3.6 on the uh, Virgin Mobile phone. Let's go back to our home base here so that we can see what's going on. Now most of you are likely, if you're watching this video, familiar with the Android software. Uh, both these devices have a finite flip to them. I'm, excuse me, I'm wrong. Uh, the HTC Evo V appears to have an uh, infinite flip to it, so I stand corrected. Um, that's pretty amazing. Um, so, uh, it's got that, features with it, of course you've got your drop down notification menus here, you're familiar with adding widgets and everything that you can also do to each of the devices on Android product where you can add your own widgets and everything else to the device and add your own features, shortcuts and everything. A lot of people like the Android product because there's a lot of customization that you can do with the Android product and make it very uh, cool for your own personal use and what you want to take and do with it. Uh, across the top here on the upper left hand corner uh, we have the speaker for making calls. Uh, we have the front facing camera on the droid. We have a back button, a home button, and your recent apps button. Very differently with the HTC Evo V 4G we have a home button, we also have a menu button, a back button, and a search button. It's a little different on the formats of the setup that we have here and able to do different things with each phone. Let's take a look at the back of the devices. Okay. So on the back of the devices, what we have here is with the Droid, we have your flash lamp, we have your camera eye, very small speaker. I'm really disappointed by the speaker being where it's at because if you lay the phone flat, it can be hard to hear. Some of the sound does come through and it's fairly loud, but it's not the best place for a speaker really when you think about it. It does have the Beats audio, which I really like that system. It makes the sound enhancement sound great. You can kill it if you want and don't and you don't have to use it. It's got a nice soft rubber back and it's got a great ergonomic grip here. One thing is you can easily hold your fingers in these places and grip the phone very well so it doesn't fall out of your hands. Um, it's got a beautiful hold to it when it comes to the grip. Now, with it, you can also pull the back off of this and you can upgrade the expandable memory, of course. Let's see if we can. And in pulling up the back, you can see here that we can easily put a micro SD card in here, and this is for your SIM card. You can also switch out batteries if uh, battery changing is something you want to take and do, buy extra batteries, be able to change them, and all that good stuff. With the uh, HTC Evo, you're looking at uh, something that's very different and interesting if you've not seen some of these different uh, 3D uh, uh, cameras, but this is a 3D camera. You can choose between two dimensions and three dimensional camera shooting with this and you also get a shutter button. Uh, you can also see here there's two flashes. Not much else to see here on the back. The um, device does come open from the back and remove and in here you can insert your uh, micro SD card and you can also flip out batteries if you so choose. So you have that availability with both devices. Alright, so now you can see the bottoms of both devices. We have a small microphone hole on the course of pull to pull off the back cover. Same thing over here on the HTC. We have a uh, small microphone hole and a back uh, cover pull for the Evo V 4G. Let's take a look at the tops of both devices and how they look. On the top of both devices we have a power button here, a small microphone hole, and an earphone jack here. We have a power button here, a earphone jack, and a small microphone hole there. Down the left hand side we just have uh, two connectors you can see here for syncing and for uh, charging the battery with a micro USB plug that you can see there. And down the right hand side of both devices uh, with the Droid we have a, it's, you probably can't see this very well here, but it's a rocker volume up, volume down button. On the HTC Evo we have a shutter button, a switch between 3D and 2D photography, and a rocker button going up and down for volume. 
Here you can see the speed test numbers that we got off both devices. Of course, you're running on Verizon over here, and you're running on the Sprint network, which is officially uh, called Verizon Wireless. Uh, you can see the differences in the speeds for downloads and uploads and all that good stuff. Okay, so now here we can see the Geekbench 2 scores, and uh, you can see how both devices performed. The uh, Verizon Droid came in at 1303 against the uh, HTC Evo at 647. And, of course, there are much difference in their build and everything else. Uh, you can see here their system information. Let's go down to their integer performance. You can see that here. Floating point performance, you can see here. And let's go down to memory performance, you can see here. And, of course, we lastly have your stream performance. You can pause at any time if you really want to read the individual numbers. But at least you can oversee uh, how these work and what they do. Here you can see the detailed scores of the Antutu benchmark software we used on both devices. The great thing about these apps is you can download them uh, to your device and you can follow along at home to see which one will work best for you and compare it to the current uh, phone you might have in your possession. You can see here that we scored 6019 with the Droid, 3549 with the Evo. Okay, so here we're using a new scoring uh, benchmarking app. It's called Velomo. And with Velomo, with the Droid, it scored 1480 in its HTML uh, scoring system. This pulled a number of HTML uh, processes through the browser. Uh, through the Metal scoring system, 524 against 267 and 981 on the Evo. Uh, you can see some details here of the scoring and how it took and worked. There's a number of different scores that this runs through. I believe one of them is Sun Spider. You can see here the Sun Spider scores as to how well it did through SunSpider and all these different benchmarking things. Very cool uh, new app we found uh, for checking out all the different ways that these folks use to benchmark. It looks like they've accumulated all the different benchmarking things on the internet and put them all in one place. Uh, what's really cool is you can see uh, how the devices uh, result up against other uh, devices that you may have had um, so you can see, let's see, show top scores, and that will show us how each of these uh, fit into the top scores um, and where they were within the details of themselves. So you can see here, let's see, there's the Galaxy Samsung S. Let's see if they show where our device is in the sequence. Looks like they, uh, we rated a 1480, so I'm not sure where we are in here or how that works. Uh, let's go to the metal and see how that played out. Uh, I guess they're just showing us comparative analysis of other devices and how well they did. Let's go ahead and page down here. We'll see if there's anything to show us more here on how the scores did and all that good stuff. So um, you can see the results that we got there. That's I think that's enough. We've got a good idea of how we did on the scoring system between both these devices. Okay, so here are the scores using uh, the, uh, I believe we're using the Quadrant Standard scores here. You can see the device on the Droid rated just below the HTC One X. Now, these aren't set in stone. We, we notice these tend to vary depending upon uh, what sort of OS is updated. For instance, we had the HTC One X and we updated to 4.04 on it. It actually beat out other HTC One Xs. So, uh, it's kind of interesting some of these calculations. They're cumulative to what people submit. Um, on the HTC Evo V 4G, it scored 2131 against 4244. You can see the lineup as to how it came out. You can also see the totals down here. Okay, so here we can see the pass mark test. You can see here how they scored for each device. The Droid came in at 1819 on the system and 1396 on the system for the Evo V. Let's go ahead and page down and take a look at some of the other scores we got. In CPU tests, you're looking at 4486 against 2895. In disk tests, you're looking at 2053 against 1148. Memory tests, 2367 against 1493. And let's see, 2D graphic tests uh, came in at 1924 versus 1558. And 3D graphic tests, uh, 609 versus uh, 697. Okay, so here's our GPS test. And what this does, it tells us how many satellites each of the devices can take and pick up. So you can see here that on the Verizon we're picking up an accuracy within 10 feet. We're picking up about oh, 20 uh, different uh, 
satellites that we have in view and about 12 in use. On the uh, HTC EVO, we have 10 in view and about 10 in use. So it uh, looks like it's getting down to an accuracy of about 16 feet, 13 feet. There we go. It slowly gets it. Okay, so here's our billion counter, and this is basically tests how fast the devices can go from zero to a billion. You can see that here, 26 seconds for the uh, billion counter on the Ryzen Droid, and on the HTC Evo, 39.921 seconds. Okay, so you can, here you can see our GL benchmark 2.1.5 Egypt. Uh, the Verizon Droid performed at 6547 frames at 58 frames per second, where the uh, HTC Evo did 4,759 frames at 42 frames per second. Okay, so here you can see both devices. They came with a frame rate per second of 27 on the Evo V 4G and on the uh, Droid 41.169, so much faster on the Droid with the KFS benchmark that we took and used for the screen. Okay, so here we can see the results uh, coming from the uh, AND E bench benchmark. That basically what this does is this uh, benchmarks uh, threads, native threads, and Java threads. So you can see here that the uh, Verizon scored 47.14 against the HTC uh, uh, Virgin Mobile 32.68, 146 against 77 on the Evo V 4G. Okay now, so this has your, pretty much your standard uh, Android operating system, especially the 4.03 or HTC uh, software if you've taken and seen it. You have the ability to control, of course, up here, your uh, flash and all that good stuff. The indicator light's not coming on because they have the battery low. Uh, you have your settings button that you can take and hit. You have access to your camera, front, back, uh, self-timer, image resolution changes you want to make, video quality, of course, you can adjust up and down. Uh, the review duration of image adjustments that you want to take and make to the quality of the image. You can adjust exposure and all that good stuff. Let's take a look at a few others. Um, let's see, ISO, white balance. The real nice thing about the, uh, the Android line, of course, you have a whole lot more customization of the camera than you do with other OSs. Um, camera options here, you can see autofocus, face detection, smile, capture, camera, all that sort of good stuff. Um, Let's take a look at, uh, you've got auto upload if you want to take and do this, camera interface where you've got grid, shutter, different video options you may have for video stabilization, uh, different camera options, I think we covered that. Um, so you have all that available to you there. Uh, there's different, uh, basically camera scenes that you can take and pre-program into the phone so that you can get different lighting scenarios and, and stuff like that. Uh, you can choose HDR, panorama, portrait, group portrait, whiteboard, low light, close up, etc, etc. <clears throat> and the camera will adjust itself to what it needs to do. You've got a zoom here, in and out, and then you also have the feature of where you have the ability to add different effects. Now the great thing about these effects is they'll show up real time in the camera so that you can get an idea as to how the effects will look when you do your shot. So and of course you can change these to however you want to take and do that. You can of course focus by touching anywhere on the screen so that you can get the subject you wanted to focus. You also have a shutter button for your camera and then a video button which activates your video. Let's take a look at some of the camera shots that we did. Okay, so now let's take a look at the camera shots that we got out of the HTC uh, camera. It seems to be compliant with a lot of the different camera, rear cameras that we see in the HTC product line, especially the HTC One product line. You can see here it takes great sharp photos, great detail, all that good stuff. Uh, one thing we have noticed, uh, like I mentioned with the HTC cameras, is the ones of late have kind of jacked up the yellow, blues, and greens in the photos. Uh, you can see a picture here, and we use this as a way to show you what happens in certain environments. You can see here, and this is much more defined on the uh, actual camera itself, it's coming through very differently, but the greens come through very uh, thick on here, and of course the floor looks very yellow when this is actually more of a brown color. Now we find that with most of the HTC One phones, they do that, and the reason that they uh, we presume that they do that is because it makes your photos you take in other environments much more brighter. The images pop with yellow, blues, greens popping out. The challenge is when you get into an environment like this where it's dominated by yellows, blues, and greens, 
um, it tends to overrun the camera. So this is one of the reasons that we use this uh, as a test. You can see it's got great detail on the floor. It takes great pictures. You can adjust some of these settings out by going into uh, the customization and everything else. Is it bad? We don't think so. Um, but definitely you want to be aware of it when you go into a yellow, blue, and green environment. Here, once again, the video. And this is another thing that kind of surprised me on, on the video of this. The uh, aperture area that it takes video it wasn't as wide as some of the other uh, areas that we've seen with other cameras. But it still takes great video, and there's no problem there. You can still see great detail in the shot. Uh, here's a low light shot, and it performed really well with the low light shot and flash shots. Uh, very impressive. This will take a second to kick into gear with the lamp. Uh, but you can see here it does a great darkened low light shot. Uh, you can see the image very well. It doesn't have any problem getting it light up and being able to see detail. Uh, same thing with the flash. It takes a great flash photo. Uh, you can see here very well in detail. Now this is a flash in low light, I should say. Uh, what we're taking in it, and this is almost a darkened image here. Uh, you can see great detail on the bike, everything else. Uh, this is a great shot for a uh, low light shot. Uh, colors come in really rich, so it performs really well in low light, which was very impressive. And it performs in normal light uh, just as well. So we really like the camera. Very impressive. HTC uh, is building a good one. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera on the Evo V 4G. I tend to like this thing. This thing is a lot of fun with the 3G element of it. We'll talk about that in here in a second. But let's look at the setup. Now, a lot of Android setups are the same. They have the same features. It's just a matter of how they're placed and what they're doing. Up here in the left-hand corner, we have different effects that you can add into a uh, shot. And, of course, these are real-time effects that you can see through the camera lens. So those are kind of fun to have. You can find those on most Android phones. Um, Let's go ahead and close that out. Down here we have the gallery. You can see if we touch on that, we would get the gallery look. You can see we also have a zoom button here. Uh, we have a different mode button here than what you find with HTC Sense 4.0. Uh, you can switch here between video and photo mode. Uh, and you can also switch between the front-facing and rear-facing cameras. Uh, you can see that right there for a second. Uh, Scene-wise, you of course have scenes where you can choose different scenes based upon what you're shooting. Not as many in the selection that comes with the uh, with the Evo V 4G that you would find in the other phone. You have, has, of course, had the ability to very quickly turn on and off the camera flash, and then of course we have settings here. Of course, you have all the different things you can do with most HTCs. You can adjust resolution, review duration. Uh, widescreen, you can adjust all these different things, auto-enhancing shots, face detection, all that sort of good stuff. So you can see that there. Now you have the shutter button here in either case, whether it's video or taking camera pictures. With the um, with the Evo V 4G, it does take better, more truer color pictures than the 1S. And I shouldn't say better because the the uh, Evo is a 5 megapixel, so obviously the pictures are more sharper and much better on the S. But it does come more to the quality of, or colors that you see. As we discussed with the 1S, uh, the latest HTCs, they're kind of jacking up the yellows and greens, blues and greens. So I like how the colors come out a lot better on the Evo V 4G. Uh, you can see here, of course, my floor in comparison. Colors with a flash in a dark lit situation come out fairly well with the Evo V 4G they don't pop as much as some of the other Evo uh, e or I'm sorry the HTC's that we've seen the HTC One series but they come out fairly well especially for a low light situation um, here we can see a video and you can see a much more darker normal representation of what my floor actually looks like it's kind of a rich brown as opposed to that bright light uh, yellowish stuff that we've been seeing. So this is a great video. It takes wonderful video. Uh, here's a low light situation that we're dealing with where we have the flash activated. And this is the one part, point where the Evo V 4G gets weak in low light situations using the flash bulb you know, or the uh, lamp if you will to uh, see stuff and uh, it just does not perform well in these formats. It might perform better if you're using 3D because both flashes and lamps will activate in those modes. Now, one of the fun things that we did, of course, do with here's some more pictures you can see. Uh, here's actually some cute pictures Hello, of my dog. Do you like being on video? Are you a happy dog? You like being on video, huh? Okay. So you 
is a happy dog, that's for sure. Okay, so let's see if we can't go through some more pictures here. And we'll go through. You can see some more stuff of here. It takes wonderful, great pictures. Let's skip down through here. What we're going to be looking for is some 3D video that I took. We had a lot of fun with the 3D video. And, of course, you can switch between it just by making the switch up here. And uh, let's see if we can find those pictures here. Right there. Now, what you'll see here is they've, of course, made the screen in such a way that you can take and see uh, 3D and without requiring the use of glasses. And so it works out really cool. You kind of have to tilt the screen to get that effect. I'm not sure how much of that you're going to get uh, on a camera lens through a camera. But in real life, seeing this in person, it's very, very cool. And it's a lot of fun. You can actually upload these videos to YouTube. And in doing so, you can ordain them to be 3D videos, and YouTube will take and make that, and you can invite your family, friends, and everyone, anyone with the 3D glasses to be able to tune and see them. But what's really nice is you can also play these uh, videos on the device itself and be able to see 3D without having to um, use the glasses. It's a lot of fun to make the 3D movies because you deal with in and out, and there's a whole... Uh, there's a whole kind of method to it. So uh, we had a lot of fun with the 3D element of this that you won't find, of course, on the 1S. But, uh, yeah, it was very cool and a lot of fun, uh, very enjoyable. In fact, one of my favorite feature in using this phone is to use it for the 3D element. I really, really love that. So that's a great feature of the phone that a lot of people don't really get into. 3D is awesome, and probably in the future it's going to be even awesomer, especially maybe if you have a 3D HD TV right now. This would be really cool to watch on it. Okay, so overall, I love both phones. They've been great phones. You can t try both of them. Uh, go to VerizonWireless.com. That's VerizonWireless.com. Be sure to check out all their phones and the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. And also go to uh, VirginMobileUSA.com. That's VirginMobileUSA.com. Check out the HTC Evo V 4G. Be sure to subscribe to all of our different videos on the Chris Voss Show and on our YouTube channel. You can see all the latest stuff coming out. Thanks to both phone companies for providing the phones for us. And uh, be sure to check back off and Chris Voss tested, Chris Voss proved. Be sure to tell him I sent you. Thanks.